So now that you've watched that video, let's, let's just make sure that we emphasize a few of the important pieces um, that he mentioned um, that are really important for us to kind of remember about the genetics of cancer and how that relates to some of the things we've learned in this class. So first he kind of talked about these gene classifications um, and we kind of talked a little bit about how there's these oncogenes and there's these tumor suppressor genes. And we kind of think about this in terms of dominant recessive mutations because of course we know that um, these, these cancerous um, changes are because of these mutations. And so we can kind of start out with these couple of questions um, and the first one being how many copies of a proto-oncogene do you need to be mutated to um, contribute to cancer? And hopefully you already kind of figured out that it's only one copy because we know of the fact that, um, that it is a dominant um, type of gene and so you really only need to have one of these mutations and it will keep doing the things that it is actually doing. Whereas if we kind of um, oppose that to the number of copies that's needed um, of a tumor suppressor gene to be mutated to contribute to cancer, we know that it actually requires two copies because it is a recessive type of gene. And so we can kind of consider all of these things and, and how they all put together in terms of, of the different classifications. But we should also kind of not forget about the fact that he also mentioned that there's these three different types of gene functions. And I just wanted to kind of emphasize them as you um, continue to do your apply assignment. Um, this will kind of come up, if you will. And so of course, the first one is this idea of cell growth, that of course these functions um, um, within the cells may be important for things like cell growth. Um, genome maintenance, of course, this is, is this idea that we already mentioned some things that could go wrong are things like in the S phase where we're actually making more DNA. And in some cases, it messes up the enzymes that are making more DNA. And so these, there are these actual proofreading, in, proofreading enzymes that come in and can actually um, fix some of those changes. And so there are some genes that are important for those particular functions. They code for the enzymes that do that. And then of course there's this idea of cell fate, that we have this idea that a cell kind of starts out as a sim cell and it doesn't really have this kind of final endpoint, but that it kind of will um, kind of get along the way um, and it will have signals to, to do what it's supposed to do in the end. And so there are certain types of, of genes that can influence um, that types of differentiation. And so those are kind of important for us to consider. And so now that we have an idea of, of how cells can be regulated, and we have this idea that there's these several different types of genes that can influence um, how cells work, it's important for us to understand that there's different cells that will divide in different ways, and there's these kind of um, ways to kind of catch if those errors actually do happen. And so it's, let's kind of put it in the context of certain types of tissue. And of course, we know that there's some tissue types um, and some cell types that are gonna to need to divide more readily. Things like skin tissue um, are gonna divide very, very often because they need to be replaced um, because they're constantly exposed um, and get worn out. And there's some things like um, bone marrow and cells that are lining the stomach that also need to continuously grow throughout the lifetime. Whereas there's some things like the liver cells that um, divide only occasionally. And so as we kind of think a little bit about how these things work and, and kind of the signaling that goes on, we know that there is this kind of coordination and signaling that happens um, between cells. And this is what we refer to as these checkpoints. And the checkpoints occur at certain points in the cell cycle to kind of catch if there are any of these mistakes. We are already kind of outlined all these potential mistakes, um, but these checkpoints allows for a kind of stop and re kind of, um, kind of gather ourselves and say, has everything gone all right? Because if it hasn't, then we can go ahead and fail this particular checkpoint, meaning that the cell is then signaled for death instead of continuing to keep more, making more and more of these um, improper cells. And so as you can see here, we have three particular checkpoints. We have the G2 checkpoint that occurs right at the end of G2. We have the G1 checkpoint that occurs fairly close to the end of G1. And we of course have the M checkpoint that occurs in the mitotic phase. And so we're gonna talk a little bit about each of these things and kind of how they work. And so here's kind of a different view um, of things. And we have this idea that we actually start out um, with this cell um, and it's gonna start going through the, the G1 phase and it start growing, so on and so forth. And a successful cell is gonna then, once it goes through there, it's gonna start um, um, 
replicating its DNA, and if that's then successful, it's going to go ahead and um, grow again and, and start um, um, increasing in size and replicating some of the organelles and macromolecules. And then, of course, it's going to go through this idea of mitosis, and it has all these little steps that you guys already know a little bit about, ending in telophase and cytokinesis to make two new completely um, independent cells. But if we put this into the context of saying, well, yes, there are these checkpoints, the first checkpoint occurs at the very, very end of G1. And that's an important stage for us to first kind of stop and check things at the end of G1 because things could not be going properly. For example, we know that there are these um, supervisors, if you will, these kind of coordinations um, between these two enzymes, um, CDK and cyclin. And they're kind of like the supervisors together that need to work together to identify problems. Um, and so the first step, of course, is in that um, G1 checkpoint, and what they do is they are able to kind of check and see has the cell actually um, gotten big enough, has it enlarged, um, and if these two CDK cyclin partners assess that it has enough energy, um, it's big enough to survive, the genetic material is still intact, then it can proceed on to the synthesis phase, and that checkpoint is then passed, as you can see, it's kind of green, it's, 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 it's got the go-ahead to go ahead and start into the synthesis phase. And at that point, it's going to go ahead and replicate, and we know it's going to um, get to the next phase, um, which is G2, and it's going to keep growing again. And by the end of that phase, it's going to hit another checkpoint that you can see here, which is at the end of G2. And clearly a lot has happened in S phase and G2, so this is a very, very important checkpoint. Um, and there's many things that get checked at this particular point. Um, first and foremost, it's again gone through another gap phase, so we need to check and see has the cell gotten large enough? Does it have enough energy to keep going? Um, clearly, um, it's gone through the S phase, so has the material duplicated? Is it all correct? Is the material intact? Um, do we need to have any DNA repair enzymes come in because maybe there was some nucleotide that was miscoded um, inappropriately? And so this is an important one to kind of fix any of those types of mistakes. But if everything checks out and everything's okay, then it will proceed. It will pass that particular checkpoint and move on into mitosis and go from there. But of course, um, during prophase, the spindle fibers are attaching to the chromosomes. And, and during metaphase, all the chromosomes are going to line up along this kind of metaphase plate. But that's where this kind of third and final checkpoint is, is in the middle of the mitotic phase called the M checkpoint. And there's many different things, again, that these CDK cyclin partners are looking for, but the kind of key thing that they're looking for is to say, has the chromosomes properly attached to the spindles? And if they're improperly attached, or in some cases unattached, the checkpoint actually fails and the cell will, the cell will not continue to divide. And so these checkpoints are really, really important for a cell to kind of be able to check to make sure everything has gone smoothly um, to that point. And so they're kind of at strategic locations um, within the cell cycle. And so we know, of course, that the cell cycle is controlled um, so that the daughter cells um, are producing exact copies of the mother cell. And it's important that we know that there is this coordination and everything is following in this correct order, so it's that we kind of start out, everything goes to the gap phase, the gap one phase, then synthesis, then gap two, then through the mitotic phase. And if there's any kind of errors, they could, of course, um, or miscoordination, it, it could lead to, to mutations. And of course, if those mutations are not caught through things like those um, checkpoints, then it could um, end up leading to cancerous cells where you have mutations stacked upon mutations. And so it's important to kind of catch any of these um, damaged cells because we know that that's important for us to then signal this cell for death so that it does not continue to divide. But it's these special partners, these CDK and cyclin, these enzymes that are important to make sure that everything is actually happening when it's supposed to. But there are some cases um, where there is a mutation that happens and it's not checked because, of course, something happens to the supervisors. They're not working properly. Um, and so the cells may become cancerous because of these altered chromosomes and they divide uncontrollably because there is no check to make sure that they're they're not doing that and it, they divide and divide and divide with these errors in them which then results in a tumor um, and so it's kind of it's important for us to understand some of these mechanisms that can control for the cell cycle because that can help us understand how cancer works and hopefully how to actually be able to prevent it so another thing that is um, kind of useful to understanding how um, cancerous cells are prevented is shown in this next video.